Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling, Nike Hot Seat, very special guest, Drexel Dragons head coach, Matt Azevedo. Matt, how are you? I'm very good. How are you, Scott? Good. The The news is out there, Matt, that Drexel Dragons have earned their first national ranking uh, in a big way, first top 25. Let's talk a little bit about what that does for you as far as a coach, recruiting, uh, how you coach, et cetera. But uh, there's a whole new light sh shining on your program. Oh, definitely. It's it, it puts us in the national limelight. I mean, we now are on the national stage. When you can crack into that USA Today coaches poll, um, you know, one, it's, it's out there for everyone to see it. And uh, so, yeah, it's huge for recruits. It's it's huge for our fan base. It's huge for just, you know, everybody in the wrestling world to see that Drexel, you know, is uh, a legitimate program um, that that uh, that that has a quality team. Um, so it's it's super, super exciting. It's a great honor. And, it, and I, it's great that the coaches are the ones who vote on it. So um, that's uh, I appreciate that as well recognition by your peers yeah. indeed the dragons six and one coming off a very strong weekend in which they overcame the then number 25 princeton and then 17 15 as part of the nebraska duels what did what did you what did you take away from the score first of all 17 15 it is tight perhaps yep. tighter than even the score would admit but talk about your matchup with princeton well, we, we felt like we matched up really well in the duel. Um, we felt like, you know, we could win enough matches to win the duel meet and that it would probably come down to bonus points or that we could win one of those, an extra swing match and maybe win six matches. Um, and, uh, that's ultimately what happened. It, it went five, five. We had two bonus point wins. They didn't. And so we won by two points, but we also dropped a couple matches that, I think we could win if we wrestled again. You know, one being at 149, Matt Samato's their 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 kid came out and, and wrestled really well and and uh, beat Matt. And then at heavyweight, I think uh, that match could be different the next time around. Um, but I'm sure they feel the same way with some of the matches that we won. So uh, <laughs> as a coach, you're always looking, you know, uh, on the positive side and trying to you know get more out of your athletes. So. I'm not going to spend too much time on the matchup that you had with the seventh-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. That was a, a loss in the column for you, your first of the season, 33-4. to But I want to spend time on the victory over Michigan State because this is – this is something we don't see an awful lot of. 25 to 9, the final score. But more than that, it's Drexel against Michigan State from the Big Ten. Talk about what you thought going into the match and then what you ended up thinking after it was over. Um, I felt like we had a very good chance to win the duel meet. Um, I have a lot of confidence in my team right now. And, um, you know, we as a coaching staff see our guys every day and we know what they're capable of. So we felt confident going into that duel meet. Um, but you know, it is Michigan state and, and they, they bring in some quality recruits and, and it is a big 10, you know, institution. So, uh, you know, that they're going to be prepared and they're used to wrestling a big 10 schedule. So they'll be tough. So you, you never know, you know, and, um, I was very happy with the way our guys responded after losing to Nebraska. You know, we dropped several close matches to Nebraska and, and we bounced back and, uh, we wrestled really well. Um, and, uh, I think overall it, it was a lot of what we expected. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of your guys. You mentioned one of them already in Samato. Matthew is continuing to appear, appear in individual rankings across the board, most notably flows, uh, where he holds the number 11 spot at 33. Uh, we'll start with him. Let's talk a bit about him. Yeah, Matt Samato came off a good season last year. He was uh, EIWA champion at 149 pounds. Um, he uh was the number four seed at the ncaa championships and uh he fell short of being all american last year lost a close match in the round of 12 and uh he's a senior he's a fifth year senior he was the first kid i ever recruited wow and um we're looking for him to you know improve on his season last year he's had a bit of a slow start this year but uh he's i think he's coming out of that and, uh, you know, his best wrestling is ahead of him. And, Coach, I misspoke. Um, he's 15th overall at 149. Is he solid at 49? Does he have trouble? As a fifth-year senior, perhaps um, um, we might be, you know, working our, our, our physiques a little differently. We might be yeah. working out differently. Where is he at at 49? Is he solid? He is solid, and he's done a great job over the last five years, you know, building his body up and getting stronger and, you know, uh, 
you know, more lean muscle and, and leaning out. Um, but, uh, it's a good weight class for him. He doesn't have to cut too hard, but I think he's big enough to where, you know, he's, uh, he can get the job done in every position. So we're talking with Matt Azevedo. He's sitting in the Nike hot seat today, the head coach of the Drexel Dragons. Uh, Kevin DeVoy is another one of those guys, a, a redshirt senior. He is a junior, though, Kevin DeVoy Jr., but this yep. redshirt senior also appears in the national rankings again, number 11 at 33. Um, how how do you see him as far as the season developing as we head to March? Do you Do you see him only getting better? Oh yeah. I mean, Kevin right now is wrestling the best he's ever wrestled in college. Um, he's confident, um, he's aggressive. Uh, and I, and I think he feels like, Hey, this is my last chance. I really need to, you know, let it all go. Um, last year he tried to make the move to 141, and it wasn't a great move for him. Uh, two years before he was EIWA champion at 133 as a sophomore and was also in the round of 12 at the NCAA championships, lost in overtime to be all American. So he had a taste of it his sophomore year. Last year was rough with the weight class change. So he's back down at 133, which is his best weight class. And he's, he's as confident as ever. And he looks really tough. One of my favorite facilities in the country to work in, you guys get to perform there and compete there at the Das Galaxies. Das Kalaska Center, Athletic Center. Yes. And it's Saturday night. Uh, you guys are going to be uh, uh, matching up with Columbia, 6 o'clock. How do you see Columbia? And remember, this is a new look Columbia with some of the internal issues are working through there. Uh, how do you see you, yourself and your team matching up on paper with uh, Columbia? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a conference duel. It's an EIWA duel, and, and we're expecting them to, you know, come in and and wrestle really tough. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're well coached. Um, I know Zach Tonelli and I know he'll have them ready to go. So, um, it's our home opener. So I know our guys are excited and I know that they're going to be ready to, you know, put on a show for our fans. Um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting, uh, competitive match and i think you know two weight classes 165 and heavyweight are going to be the marquee matchups and are going to be you know fun to watch mid-november you had a matchup with army and west point in particular uh the the academies you never really know what to expect from the academies do you coach because they have so many <laughs> different demands on them whether it's navy or air force or army uh for that matter how do you prepare for uh, a match with with an academy team um, I, I, what I, what I do, what I, cause in my past experiences, the one thing, you know, you are going to get out of the academies, they're going to fight hard and they're going to fight to the end and they're never going to give up. Um, it doesn't matter if you're beating them by 10 points, they're, they're going to keep coming back. Uh, so you have to prepare your guys to go, you know, seven minutes of fighting, you know, seven minutes of really wrestling hard the entire time. Um, and so going into Army, we know that we're going to get a strong effort from their team. Um, and it was a dogfight. You know, we had to come up with a, a big upset at 197 to win that dual meet, actually. Um, so that it was a, you know, every match, things happen that you don't expect. Um, and that means maybe somebody on your team has to come up with the with a result that you may not expect. And we had that, you know, at 197, Josh Murphy beat the number 11 kid in the country from Army. And that, that pushed us over the top for the duel. So it was an exciting match. 22 to 14, the final score there. Coach, let's turn our attention to a couple important things that have happened. Most notably, you added Josh Jeva to the coaching staff, and we'll talk about that. But also, you joined in partnership with the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center, Brandon Slay and Company. They say uh, um, uh, high tide raises all ships, and I believe the high tide is only, only yet to be realized. What are your thoughts about First, Jeva adding to your staff. We're super excited to have Josh Jeff on staff. Um, I got to work a little bit with, with Josh last year as he was working within the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center after he graduated from Iowa. And uh, we lost Jimmy Sheptock over to Maryland. So uh, we talked to Josh, and he wants to get into coaching. So we were able to hire him this summer. And he has added – a, a lot more value than I than I ever expected. You know, sometimes with these young guys right out of college, you don't know what to expect. Like, you know, they're going to have energy. You know, they're going to work hard in the room. But, you know, what type of skills do they have? Um, and he has brought a lot 
uh, to the practice room that uh, I think has really taken our team to another level that I'm I'm really excited about. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the impact that he's going to have. You know, you know, it's forward. funny. Five years ago, I said the same thing about your hire. Uh, <laughs> I honestly believe that this was a great hire by uh, by Drexel when they hired you. And now you're doing the same thing. Your pedigree, of course, uh, it speaks for itself. But I think hiring Josh Jeva may be even better for the future of this program than many of us would uh, admit today. So he's got to be very well-versed in coordinating uh, operational needs and travel and, and video scouting and camp and clinic registration. What about him as a liaison to the Beat the Streets program? Is that part of it? Um, yeah, you know, he has ties, you know, he's, he is a li liaison. He's, he's technically Brandon Slay's assistant coach at the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center. Mm -hmm. And then he also works within Beat the Streets. He helps, you know, some of the, uh, the, you know, the, the high school kids there. Um, he's, he's pretty heavily involved in the community. You know, he's, he's not from, he's from not too far outside the city, um, Yardley, Pennsylvania. Uh, and so, uh, you know, he has a passion about helping, you know, wrestling in this area. So he's involved in a lot of different ways. I'll remind our fans that uh, he was he was a hammer when at Council Rock South, uh, state champ, record of 124 and 7. Uh, I go back a long way with him. He's always had a passion, much like you, uh, Matt, that the passion is just real evident. And uh, it's, it's just a strong hire. I'm really pleased that you've only added to uh, not just a coach, but somebody who has that passion, shares that passion with you. Let's talk about the the uh, handshake uh, that you guys have made with the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center, and most notably Brandon Slay and those very tough cats, including guys like B.J. Futrell and others that can really have an impact on the future of USA Wrestling. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center is is a collaboration uh, between Penn University and Drexel University and uh, or University of Pennsylvania, um, and we're super excited about it. Um, you know, they kind of took the reins uh, when when Alex Terrapelli took over, and you know, him and Roger Reyna worked together with a few of their alumni, and and then included us, uh, and you know getting this thing off the ground and having the first ever joint regional training center between two division one universities, uh, you know, kind of a groundbreaking idea. And it has just exploded from there. You know, since then we've, uh, hired Brandon Slay. We have four resident athletes, BJ Futrell, Chase Pammy, Dan Valamont, and Richard Perry are training full time in Penn's wrestling room and in Drexel's wrestling room. They're in our room Mondays and Fridays, and then they're over at Penn on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then we get we get the uh, we get Brandon Slay. You know, we have him in our room and helping our guys uh, along with the great workout partners. And uh, it, it's been a great relationship so far. And I'm really excited about, you know, the, the future. You're the eighth coach in the school's history there at Drexel. You replaced a man who I have, I hold in high regard, uh, Jack Childs, who after 35 years uh, joined his wife in retirement. What, um, I don't know if there's any special pressure to, to uphold what he did and, and to, to endorse that, but I think it would be an honor to replace somebody like Jack Childs. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when any when a when a guy like you know Jack uh, can be the head of a program for thirty five years, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, in the city of Philadelphia, um, you know, and he's been through a lot of different you know eras of Drexel. You know, Drexel the University has taken a lot of different you know paths, ups and downs throughout the years, and he's been you know the steady the steady guy holding this position down and, and keeping the program around during a time when a lot of programs were dropped. You know, I think that's, that's impressive. Um, you know, and the legacy that I feel like, you know, Jack has left behind what I get from his, you know, past wrestlers and coaches and stuff is just that he was a great man and a great leader and, and people liked to be around him. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, great memories from the alumni, you know, and his former wrestlers. So, um, yeah, I feel fortunate to to be at Drexel and have this job, and you know, have the opportunities that we have every day. You know, this uh, this change from 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 Jack uh, to you, 
uh, five, well, this is your sixth season, really. Uh, but we're seeing that happen now over at, at Ryder as well, a longtime rival in Ryder, where uh, John, John Taylor, or Gary Taylor, has decided to, uh, you know, call the end at the end of this season and hand the reins fully over to John Hanji. How do you see that, uh, that rivalry? Do you expect it to continue, and do you see it heating up with two young coaches? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty heated already, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Like when I first got here, I don't think I understood that there was a rivalry there. It was new to me. So we wrestled them one. We wrestled them the first time, and it came down to the last match, and they beat us by a point, I think, uh, in the duel. And uh, I remember just being, you know, a little irritated that we lost that duel, feeling like we should have won it. Um, and then we wrestled them again that season at home, and it same thing came down to the last match. They beat us, um, and that left a bitter taste in my mouth. And uh, and then you know as the year as the years have gone on, I realized that from alumni that this was a great rivalry. And I think throughout the years, it's it's been. Uh, it's it's continued let's just say that so in in the five years that i've been here i think we've wrestled them six times and we have beat them twice they beat us four times and uh it's it's a barn burner match every year it seems like it just it comes down to the last match there's controversy there's a lot of yelling uh it's exciting <laughs> i look forward to that match every year i know our guys do and i anticipate that that rivalry just staying as as strong as it ever has been home or away it doesn't matter i like the it matchup always <laughs> Always, buddy. Judah and Roman, how old are they now? <laughs> Judah is uh, five and Roman is three, but Roman's birthday is uh, the 12th. So uh, Monday, next Monday, is he'll be four. Do our so. best to give our best uh, to the kids, but also to Brooke, uh, yes. your lovely wife, uh, a stalwart fan of yours, I know. But uh, we've watched your career unfold, and it's only getting uh, better. Cal Poly, then on to, uh, to Cornell. Uh, just outstanding uh, wrestling and, and what you've been able to do is teach. And I think Bobby Douglas said it best when he said, I'm a teacher first, I'm a coach second. And understanding that years later, uh, as, as I have, I believe that uh, to be possible with you as well. Teacher first, coach second. You agree with that? Oh, definitely. You know, we're we're constantly guiding these guys through their lives in – a lot of different aspects, you know, uh, you know, whether it's school or, you know, their career beyond college, uh, you know, girlfriend problems, you know, uh, deaths in the family, you know, at times. And, you know, these kids have to go through a lot, you know, during these five years and, and you never know what's, what's coming next, you know, whether it's injuries, like we lost Garrett Hammond this season, you know, he blew his knee out second match of the season. And I'm, you know, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, he's laid up for a couple months now. And so it's like, you know, dealing with those, you know, helping these kids deal with these issues throughout, you know, the, the, this tough time, uh, you know, challenging times in their lives. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I take that responsibility seriously and, um, you know, some, sometimes it's tough and, and sometimes it's, you know, it's easier. <laughs> you know, co- co- I, I won't, Some, I'll share something with you. And hot, you know, uh, you Jack, know, rough at times. Jack, so. Jack shared with me one of the hardest things for a coach to do, uh, and this is where it gets real, is to let those kids go when they graduate. There's a, there's a sense of loss. I'll be interested to see how you handle the departure of uh, those two seniors when they do uh, retire and and uh, move on at the end of this season. It'll be interesting to see how you, Matt, handle it. Yeah. Wrestling fans, you can follow along with the Drexel Dragons on Twitter at Drexel Dragons and also hashtag do you believe and spell it out, D-U believe. And uh, also look for him on Facebook as well. Matt, thank you so much for the time and eye-opener of an interview. Congratulations on cracking the top 25. We're looking forward to see what the future brings for the Dragons. Thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. Special guest in our Nike hot seat today, Matt Azevedo.